Everybody, welcome back. This is uh, November 13th. This is a Monday. Um, we had a three-day weekend this past week. Um, last Friday, I went over some of the first four questions here. This 14-2 um, guided reading worksheet about a business boom, how businesses are meant to expand to the point where they are going to be relied upon to help make the economy better. Um, 1920s, that was exactly the case. So today, we're going to pick up number five and kind of finish this worksheet here today to look at how um, businesses really help propel the 1920s economy forward. Um, at this point, looking at all different aspects. So last week we talked about um, the consumer economy, the cycle um, here. And again, look at the video from, from uh, November 9th to help you out with that one. And we had, um, which goes with purchase mostly through credit, um, the installment plan, how does that work? And then also how does advertising change um, in the 1920s? So as before the 1920s versus ads after. Um, but So Americans are really primed here to really consume a lot of stuff they can pay for it a lot, a little bit easier now. Not saying it's cheaper, but just saying they can pay for it much easier than they had before. Um, so today we're going to look at the rise in productivity in the 1920s and what leads to that rise. Um, <clears throat> when we look at some of these areas, there's three things we have to look at. First one is electrical power. All right. Second is um, persuasive advertising, which we talked about last week. And finally, what, another thing we talked about last week was the installment plan or plans whenever you buy stuff. So those are things that lead to rise in productivity. Um, when you have these things occurring, you're going to produce a lot more. That's what all productivity is. When we look at an economy, there's a set goal that you need to have um, as, as a business. You need to produce as much as your customers are willing to buy. So if you're like a car dealership, for instance, and you drive by a car dealership and you see all those cars on the lot, um, for any car dealership, say it's like Hoffman Ford on Route 22 down there um, on Jonestown Road, right next to the to the Target, Coles, and all that area. But if you go to um, Hoffman Ford, you look at that car, car dealership, they have a lot of cars in the parking lot. Um, most people would think that's a good thing, but actually that's not really the best of things for, for Hoffman Ford. Yes, it gives them opportunities to sell multiple various cars, but <clears throat> Hoffman Ford would rather see that parking lot empty because they sold all of those, they have have sold all those cars instead of having them there collect dust. Um, so that's something we're looking at here. That that how can we keep productivity to meet the demands of these consumer goods? Electrical power helps to do that because of the now the new jobs um, you know, that, that that are done much easier than before. Uh, so that's the first thing we look at with with these three things. So that's how it leads to productivity. And I also add one more to this here um, as well. You. Um, uh, let's see. I put also I put period here, production of oil as a fuel source. All right, and that is really something that um, helps to lead this this economy onward, onward even more because it helps um, add to um, the diversity of the fuel that can be used to help power our industry, um, but it could also help um, generate more electrical power as well. So again. These factors help to increase the, 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 the consumers buying the products, but at the same time, you need, to, you need the workers to produce as well. And, and, and the electrical power and the oil helps to make that, make that production happen a lot easier. All right, so <clears throat> number six on the back page. What is Henry Ford credited for making? Henry Ford was uh, credited for making the Ford Model T car, all right, which is essentially a, it's a mass-produced car. The second question for this answer here is going to ask us, well, how is that product made so quickly? Um, it was the assembly assembly line, excuse me. All right. Spell it. Anyways, but each of these, um, the four Model T cars were made beforehand. If you said Henry Ford made the car, no. The car was made long beforehand. Henry Ford just revolutionized how that car was made. And that was the Model T, <coughs> and he created that through the assembly line. All right. Now, this next question deals with some of the more specific aspects of this, which makes it, why is the Ford Model T so much more um, popular in the 1920s? Why was this creation so popular? And essentially, um, it was the first affordable first affordable car in the nation. All right. When we look at other cars at this time period, um, automobiles are not cheap. If you buy a car, you, it has to be made probably over the course of three to four months by a skilled craftsman who, who makes the car from scratch, essentially. It's just only one or two people to make it. All right, so they make that car, and when they buy that car, 
usually what happens is they have to hire their own mechanic to be on site to deal with any mechanical issues with that car. It's a it's a luxury item that the rich use as a as a plaything, as a toy essentially. Um, it's not really used to do a whole lot of business with. It's not really used to get a lot done. So this car is is, is relatively new. Henry Ford helps to revolutionize the way that it's made. And if you make more with the assembly line, and I'll put this up here as well. <clears throat> If you make more cars, and Henry Ford, one Model T rolled off the line every 24 seconds. If you make more of those cars, you can drive the price way down, which is what happens. That's most Americans are now able to um, afford it. So that's what we look at when we look at Henry Ford. That is the first affordable car in the nation. That's why it is so popular and it's cheap. The ordinary American can afford it. All right. Now we look at other stuff here. Number eight, especially. Um, I was for both admired and hated. Um, let's start with admired here. Five dollar day wage is what Henry Ford offered. It's way more than any other industrial job at that time period, and he was able to use this five dollar day wage to really become a ruthless leader in his business. That's why he was hated um, a lot. It was because he um, um, had ruthless big business tactics. Um, but denied unions to show up in his workplace. He figured if he gave a wage that was higher than any other industrial job at that point, he would be able to, to help keep his workers from joining unions. Because if you work at a wage that is much higher than anybody else, you don't want to keep that job because that's not easy to find. So he used that to his advantage to keep the workers at, you know, I guess at bay, or even if you want to say that keep the workers um, under wraps to make sure that they are doing their jobs effectively. Because, you know, you want to get the best workers. Obviously, you want the conditions to be really good. However, at the same time, we offer really good pay that brings the best workers in, and they don't want to lose that job, so they will work very hard for you. So that's another thing that helps productivity out as well, is, is that the workers are treated fairly and kindly to make sure that um, they work uh, effectively for those people that are that are on the job. So again, he was loved for his wages, but he was hated because he was a harsh leader, and people probably complained about him a lot. However, any union talks were, were, were snuffed out really quickly by, by Ford because he was already putting a lot of money into his workforce, way more than probably most other companies would be comfortable doing. So he decided that, you know, if I pay you more, I don't have to deal with these unions. I can, you, you can work whatever job you need to. And that's as a result, I get better products and you get, you're happy with your pay. Um, you don't need any other working conditions need to be worried about. But again, if you bring in those, those arguments, you could be fired without protection. And that's the one thing Henry Ford made him very, very uh, hated. All right, number nine, what new businesses were created as a result of Ford's creation to help the American economy and industrial growth. I put a couple up here. Think about all the things that are needed to keep a car up. The car dealerships, motels, gas stations. Campgrounds and restaurants. There we go. But yeah, these these really help keep the American economy going. And these idea that you know your garages, car dealerships, motels, gas stations, all these new industries are flowing as a result. And also, if you think about all the products that are used to make a car, so steel, glass. Um, Oil companies, um, rubber, and even um, maybe even leather as well, depending on what the seats are made out of. But you have all these companies that are now producing raw materials that are sending to Ford's plant to be manufactured into cars. So that's definitely something that we can look at as something that helps industrial growth as well. Finally, last but not least, um, kind of a question that's un completely unrelated to um, the discussion that we have up, up top with Ford and all the other stuff. But there are some people that do miss out as a result of the 1920s, and these are farmers.
unskilled workers, and African Americans. So farmers are left out in the 1920s because during the war, they were asked to produce a lot of food for the soldiers overseas in Europe. Once the war is over, they don't have to produce as much. The problem is they don't stop the production. They keep planting a lot of crops, and as a result, when they move forward, they um, essentially produce a lot, but they don't have a lot of people buying their crops, so they lose a lot of money at that point. So they don't see any benefit from the 20s economy as farmers. Unschooled laborers are also lost in this uh, equation because, yes, they do get paid $5 a day. They become consumers. However, these people become very expendable. Um, you can be changed. You can be altered. You can be moved um, to any which way. You can be fired for any, any reason whatsoever. You are expendable as an unskilled worker. So these people don't see a lot. And then also African Americans, just because of the color of their skin, many people did not want to, you know, give them a job in this new economy or maybe even give them business in this new economy as well because, um, you know, people just didn't like the color of their skin. Racism, discrimination, it still happened in the 1920s. Um, not everybody saw the economic benefit at this time period. Uh, African Americans play a big role to the social changes in the 1920s. Um, however, the economics of them are often left out. They're, they're often left out because of this. All right. So these are the groups that we look at here today. When we finish this up, um, we, we move forward and we take a look at how um, the economy was changed at that point. When we move forward here, um, and again, here's a, an idea of the Model T, what it looked like in the assembly line. You can see the finished product and then how they built it, all the, all the same parts that went around the factory and how they were put together by, by the workers. You see the wheels, the tires coming together. And they, they were all set up to, to help the the the, uh, uh, the plant to build the car as fastly and quickly as possible. Again, one car drove off the line every 24 seconds. It's remarkable. Um, in class, what we did today is we looked at the assembly line as an exercise. We split the class up into three different groups of seven, and I each gave them a task. They built like a cookie, essential, essentially. They, they kind of drew a stencil, drew the circle of the cookie, and then they kind of drew the chocolate chips and put the, you know, they did whatever they needed to to help create this cookie in, in, in sets. Um, so we had a stenciler, some cutters, which took a long time to do compared to stenciling it. Um, so I had three people on that, the chocolate chunk drawer, um, put chocolate chips or chunks in your cookie, um, the cookie colors with two people involved with that, and then you know they, they colored the cookie with your chosen color, anything that looked the same. The point is was to make sure that these cookies turned out exactly the same. So you know as the model Ford, as model T was was you know, used to create through assembly line, I had the students kind of practice that in the class today, and that's what we ended the class with. All right, and again I had the workplace rules for the students as well that no laughing, no talking, goofing off. Anything, anytime someone laughed or talked, you lost your production. Um, which means that you weren't producing, you weren't getting paid. So that's something that um, was definitely very, very important at that point. So something to really kind of take hold here to understand that all the people at this time were going to um, you know, follow the assembly line. And Henry Ford really, really revolution, re revolutionizes this, and it's how we make everything today. Everything is made with some sort of assembly line production to help um, Americans out. All right, so that's the end of our economy discussion. We're going to do something else on credit tomorrow, more or less. I have a secondary source we'll read, and then we'll kind of talk about the, the pros and cons of credit and use that as part of our um, finishing up with the economy. All right, everybody have a fantastic day. I will see you later.